have a new sky. And the problem is, it's not showing in here. So I say, okay. And it turns the picture upside down and says, all right, go find that same sky. Well, I have it. Say, okay. Do I want the perspective? Yeah, fine. Yeah, fine. Say, okay. And look what just happened. Now in the water, we're seeing the reflection. That's awesome. Yeah, it that picture originally like it was so gray that day that um it was just like whited out on top and bottom and no I, it was I not ever... gray it was a beautiful day <laughs> yeah you're right it was a beautiful it was beautiful because the water was so calm yeah but that's a, a quick fix for that i think that's a beautiful shot what i might do if i take the uh, uh let's take a a burn tool again and in this case, I'll go to midtones, leave it low, and I'll just add a small amount of work at the top. And to do that, I'm going to collapse the layers. And now I go across one time. Look at how nice that sky is. Oh, yeah. mm -hmm. And I'll hit it in the corner here and there. You might, if I hit him, watch what happens if I take a real low exposure and just go down him once. Mm -hmm. Got it? Yeah. Ops. Yeah, I think that, that really moves. Here we here's how yeah. we started. Mm -hmm. As you remember, it was a better day than that. <laughs> yes. <laughs> By the way, um, and I have this debate daily with photographers. Many of them say you can't move things, you can't change things. Oh yes, I can because I'm not a photographer. They go, what do you mean? You have a camera. I said, no, I'm a photo artist. Mm -hmm. There's a difference. Okay, let's move to, I'm going to pass that one, go to a, another one here. Well, you got to go to all of them. Okay, here we go. In the end. Now, when I saw this, I thought, wow, this is really beautiful. What does he need moved in it? What does he want to change? What does he want to critique? So in here, I have an edited version of it. Let's see which one it is. Is it that one? Yeah. So this is the one I spent some time on. And then here's what he gave me. Let's just look at the difference. Okay, which one's which? This is the one I edited. This is the one he gave me. Unedited, edited. Do you see what happens with the tone by darkening? You get more impact with these lights, with these beautiful specular highlights in them and these rays, you can see them. The other thing I did is I made the sun round instead of this. You see how it's, um, it's not round, it, it has some intrusion in it. So I went in and fixed that. I also made sure that the bottom was darkening slightly and the sky was all across. So I didn't do a whole lot on this, although I actually did. And you have to look closely to see it. Let me move this out of the way again. Here's why. What do you see? No cars. No oh. buses. Watch. Oh my goodness. How did you do that? Just with clone? There are a lot of tools to do this kind of thing. Uh, there's another picture coming up I'll show you. Uh, it would be a little easier to demonstrate. The point is, you didn't notice, did you? When I ask you in general, what, what do you see different? When I look at a picture as a critic, the first thing I see are all these tour buses and cars and, and they just destroy the feeling for my photo. So I spend time to get rid of it. See how smooth it is? The light goes right across. 
So that's those were the basic parts of that one, I believe. Let me look at another one. Let's go to, okay, same thing here. Let's go to Bibor. Let's do, 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 do this one. <clears throat> okay, and I'll open up the edited. I think I did one of his too. Let me look. I'm sorry, guys, that I didn't start the recording right at the beginning. I forgot. <laughs> it's okay. All right, here's the uh, edited copy. I did some of these ahead of time, so again, we could keep moving. Yeah. Again, we're going to play the game. I'm going to make it big. We're going to go back, and we're going to look at each one. What do you see? Cars were removed. Cars gone. Yeah, people? cars don't belong here. And the people. This is, this is history. People are gone. Very good. What I'm teaching you is how to critique your own pictures. I can talk all day about what I see, but it's more important of how you now will view your photos. Whenever I see this, and I've been on tours where you see these amazing pieces of history, but then we have the modern sitting there glaring at us and it doesn't have to be. Nothing here, nothing here, nothing here. Sherry, so did you do that all in Photoshop? Yes. Okay. Yes. And again, I'm because gonna show you some of these techniques. That's your main use. You don't typically use Lightroom, right? Oh yeah, I, I start everything in Lightroom, correct. Okay. Yeah, in fact, uh, if you we have time, I can start from a picture and go through that whole thing. But the thing I wanted to do is make sure that everybody tonight learns how to critique their own photos. Totally. That's what we're now, here for. Now, the other I thing is that. I want you to look at the tones in this wall beneath the building. And now I'm going to go here. Do You see it change slightly. And the way I did that was very simple. You go to the sponge tool. You say, I want to saturate it, but you say, but not a lot. I'm going to turn it way down. Take a huge brush and watch. See it come alive? Oh, yeah. Here it is before, after. How hard was that? Oh. OK. As far as the, there was a little bit of cropping. I think I did. It was tiny amount. It wasn't. It wasn't significant. I felt the rest of the picture stood on its own very well. But it didn't. It have more sky when you started out. Uh, let me look. The first, the original. <clears throat> See, that was the copy. Let's look at the original. This is Bonificio. These keep getting in the way here. Go back to here. Bonificio. What you saw was a little darkening I did. Yeah, okay. See the difference? Mm -hmm. And the reason I did that, if I left it here, your eye kept trailing out here and I didn't want it to leave. I wanted it to stay in there. So I brought it back in by slightly darkening that. Okay. Light is, of course, what, how we work, but it's not over when the camera's done. It's just getting started now. Okay, let's try, what was the other one here? Yeah, let's do this one. And I think I have an edited version of Cremon. Let's see, edited. Cremon, there we go. Okay. All right. <clears throat> Let's take this one, is the original. You can see immediately that I did a crop on the left side. Why? Oh, 
Come no, on. I went to the light part first. Correct. Ansel Adams would never let that happen. <laughs> he, he made sure your eyes stayed in the photo. If you don't believe me, read up on him. He said, anything that's lit at the edge draws the attention away from what it is I'm, I'm shooting. So when I looked at this, the first thing I thought, there's too much light area. And is there anything really important there? And not really. So by doing that, the eye's drawing down here. I also did a little darkening on that. See how light it is here? And then I burn down slightly. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's go back. Is there any other cropping? No, I thought the rest of it was very well done. I love this line coming down to the corner right here. Beautiful. Mm -hmm. Now, <clears throat> there was another problem and I'll show you, right? Opportunity, there. not problem. <laughs> yeah. For me, there are problems because I know how long it's going to take to fix it. <laughs> <laughs> mm. Much better. Okay. Wow, what a difference. See, what happens when I view a photo, I really am trying to get a feel for the history for the time of day, for the coloration. I love these reds. And I've spent time in Europe and the red tile just is so attractive. And I don't want to change any of that. But when I see people standing around here, a baby carriage and a car uh, can't work for me. So. But if you, just out of curiosity, I mean, I, I understand where you're going with the removal of people and the cars and stuff like that. But I know sometimes myself when I'm taking vacation pictures, sometimes I want to capture some of that just to show that this isn't a mock-up. This is this is real. This is right. you know, that kind of and thing. And I do the same you thing, but I don't I don't do it on that. this kind of photo. Okay. I would probably I'd probably be on the street shooting them with that in the background. Got it. But see, with this, the architecture is very much the main theme here. Beautiful. Okay. Next, let's see who's this one. We did that. Okay. Are you this going one. to show us how to remove all that stuff? If you would like. Yes, I would. Okay, I got two yeses. <laughs> <Good>. <laughs> <laughs> yeah so, no we're fine by the way i only do what you want to see or hear as a critic you know i could go on for days about oh you should have done it oh well i like this but the point is i'd rather show you how to do it and then you're on your own for instance here's what i was given here's where i took it what are you seeing different sky correct why did i not like a sky with Isn't a contrail that? from a 747 distracting yep it ah but belong. it's still in the reflection though that's right and that's why i'm going to show you how to get rid of it got it here's how you do it because i'm not going to use that special filter that i'll show you how to get on your own that makes the reflection if you do a new sky and you see, oh, there's a problem, all you do is you come over and you grab the spot healing tool. Mm -hmm. You make it a little bit bigger than the line and you can start from the outside and go in and let go and there's no more contrail. It's all gone. The other thing I did, and it's, it's subtle, look at the line here of the shore how it goes uphill a lot. Now it doesn't. Here's how I fix that. <clears throat> you say, select all. I want the whole picture. Edit. I would like to transform it in some way. I think it's by using a skew. You come down to the bottom right and there's a little box and you pull it. Okay. Command D to get rid of it. And now you see it's more horizontal and we get back. Here's what I was working on 
Now I've changed it. Let's go back to here. Keep going. That's yeah, not letting me go back. I'll just use a revert. <clears throat> okay. Nope. There it is. So you see how I've changed that line so it more balances the photo. Mm -hmm. Now, in one of the ones I did, I removed all the cars. It took some time. <laughs> it was a lot of work. So I thought, you know, most people, they don't have that kind of time. Just leave them in there. And then I kept thinking, but what if I wanted to change that? What if I wanted to get rid of them? Oh, man, what am I going to do? Well, let's see if this works. If I grab a, a, a polygonal lasso, and I'm just going to try this group here. From here to there, down, across, and up. And I say, well... What am I going to do with this stuff? Well, actually nothing because I've, I've copied it, but what do I have to put in there? I don't have anything. So let's try something else. Let's go over to this one and it says patch tool. What if I go around some of these cars here with the patch tool? And I move, I have two things at the top, a source and a destination. This one I'll say source and see if it works. I move it up and you see what just happened? Start to get rid of the cars. It's pretty sloppy, but you get the idea. If I had a little more room in there, it would work easier. Oop, don't wanna do that. Hmm. So the way I do it the hard way, command D, is I go in real close and I grab the clone stamp tool. I set it for 100%, and I'm going to now make a, a move to get rid of some of these cars. If I, I'm watching the brick, I wanna see lines continue to do what they're doing. So here's one, there's two here, I'm gonna grab right in the middle of that one. I'm gonna come down to right in the middle of this one and watch what happens. Get it? I can come over here, get another one. So as you see, this is gonna take a little time. If it's important to you to do it, okay. Now, because I've gone so far down, I'll come over here and find this group and I'll click right there, come over right there and come up and fill in from the back down. Now I can come back to here, here, and I keep doing this till I get the balance that I want. Okay. Now, how long would it take you to do all of that? <laughs> Not longer than my patients would allow for. <laughs> exactly. And that's a great point. A lot of people say, you know, it's fine the way it is. Actually, this picture is now. The only other thing I might want to do is take a burn tool and do a little work on the sky as a vignette down a little here and it's fine here and pretty much ready to go. If I darken that, you see, that's not good. Okay. Okay. Let's go. Next one. Don't save. Don't save. All right. Let's see the next one. Let's go to here. What's this one? We did that. Okay, we have a feather. Did I do a edit on that? I have to look. Edit it. Yeah. Okay, here's before. Here's what I thought it could go to. Now, 
when I'm looking at a picture, if I see that it has a huge area of the same luminance, my eye is not directed. I have to say, do something to the photo to keep the viewer interested. And so what I did, as you see, first of all, I did a major cropping. We don't need all of that sand out there because the, the information for the viewer is the feather. There's lots of ways to get to, to this point. If I take this, of course, the first thing we do is we crop heavily. And I'm using, you see how this intersection for this feather is here? And we also have a heavy one at the shadow. So we're mm -hmm. in good shape. That's nice. We have a good flow across here. Might wanna bring it in a tiny bit more from there, okay? Mm -hmm. Now, we have a lot of ways of changing this picture. Um, let's see. Let's use another program. How many of you are familiar with NIK? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yes. It used to be free. Now it costs. I held back for years trying to buy the new one until I figured out it could do stuff like that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So I thought, okay, I'll buy it. But you see, here's the point. You say, well, I'm not paying for all this stuff. You don't have to. You can do it in Photoshop. But the point I use, it gives you so many new ideas for your image. Look at how detailed that is, as opposed to this softness. Something happened there. This softened one. And you say, well, maybe I want a little of both. You can do that again if you take it back into Photoshop. I don't know why we're getting those. It's updated. Let's go down to warm, deep. Look at that. Mm. And you say, well, let's go a different direction. We can go black and white or blue. <laughs> Touch of spring. So the point is, why do we have these filters? Because they give us new ideas. And I can do this again if I want to do it the hard way. I want to burn. And I'm going to make a big brush but which time, which one should I use? If I use shadows and I turn it up a little bit and I just punch the middle of the flower or the feather, let's make that bigger so you can see it. If I take burn shadows about 34% and right now it's 1100, let's go down. Watch what happens when I draw across it. It puts mm -hmm. all kinds of detail in it. It also puts color in I don't want. So I say, well, maybe I should do it with midtones. Now yeah, that doesn't work. Well, how about if I just look at the highlights? That's the worst. So the point is I use these three things all the time to try to make the changes that I am sensing too hard. Shadows, midtones, better. Shadows, highlights. See how it just darkened it a little bit? It didn't add any color. That may be what you want. In this case, I'm gonna turn the highlights off, go to midtones, and I'm just gonna go around like this. And it's gonna keep bringing the eye back to the feather. Got it? Now, you also have a tool in here, it's called Sharpen. If I turn it up, there is a warning. Never go over the same area twice with a sharpen tool because you will get JPEG artifacts <laughs> all over the place. So if I just go like this one time, I'm done. Let's go take a look closer. Do you see that difference? See if I can bring it back. There, do you see it? Yes. It's very subtle okay. though. Yes, and by the way, subtle is important in photo competitions. See it? It's just enough. You don't go over anything twice with a sharpened tool. Now, if you have, if you're really interested in how to make it right, 
and you're really interested in Photoshop and you really have a good bank account, you can do this. You can go, I would like to go to Topaz and I have denoise, oh no, I have sharpen artificial intelligence. Now, for everyone who's listening, I use sharpen AI and denoise AI on practically every photo I take. But you can't just let it go willy nilly. You have to be in charge of it. So here's what I'm seeing. Over here on the right, motion blur. Well, there's no motion. Out of focus, well, maybe. Too soft, oh, maybe. Let's look at too soft normal. But to use this filter, I immediately go up to 100 and I make it 400%. I wanna see what I'm doing here. At the bottom, let's see, no. I got people. I'm Go not ahead. sure we're seeing your topaz. Screen. Oh, I'm sorry. You're right. I have to do a share. <laughs> Thank you. I'm like, Thank I'm you. seeing a cursor go around. Thank you. But... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if you don't see it, I'm talking. You tell me. Do you see it now? No. It should be a big feather. There we go. There it is. There it is. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, I even practiced moving these back and forth and I forgot. <laughs> okay. Over here, motion blur, there's no motion. Out of focus, not really. Too soft, very noisy, very blurry. I'll say too soft normal, but up here, I changed this to 400%. I wanted to get close. Now, here's what happens. There's some uh, tools up here that says, well, do you want to see the whole thing? No, I want to see it split view. Here's why. I take it back and forth and I look at each section and see if it's doing what I want it to do. And this is doing exactly what I want. It says it's updated, good, apply it. It'll show the processing in the upper right corner. Shirley, remind me to go back to Photoshop. Okay. Oop, that didn't work at all. Let's try another one. Going to, where's my Photoshop? There it is. Okay. You said that you run both of those on most of your photos. Uh, yes. Which, which order do you do them in? Thank you. That is an exact correct question. <laughs> Who is that? Who's talking? That's that Bruce. Awesome. Yeah. Bruce Smith. <laughs> that is the perfect question because if you do it wrong, oh boy, you always, always, always denoise it first. And I've actually done experiments with this because I, I didn't believe some of the guys who were talking about this and they're all right. You denoise it because if you sharpen it first and then denoise it, you're not going to get the gain that you would have had before, starting from the beginning of noise. It's a lot different. Okay, so and here's what we have now. Topaz is, like you said, it is expensive. But every once in a while, they have sales because we picked it up pretty decent price around the holidays. Good. So I've had follow a war them, with keep an eye on that, and you, you, know, you might be able to get it cheaper. I've had a war with them for the last three days, and I have to tell you, they came through on the weekend when they weren't even open. I told them I was giving this presentation. And I wanted to make sure I was able to use this certain filter and it wasn't working. And boy, they got back to me. I was really? very impressed. And here's what they said, Jerry, you found a bug. Yeah, I know. <laughs> That's what I do. So they fixed it and they sent me the new copy. So your new sharpen will work. You'll be okay. All right, let's do, how are we doing here? We're doing good. Oh, here's another one. This one I started with the waterfall <clears throat> and then i've seen so many waterfalls i thought how can i make people stop and in a gallery go over and really have fun with this waterfall maybe buy it like that let's get it here there you go <clears throat> so here it was before now again i'm going to talk about luminosity. <clears throat> when I see a picture that is almost the same illumination value across, I don't know where to go and I usually walk away. And I'm talking, by the way, I buy photos. My last one cost me $3,200. 
I buy photos. I wouldn't buy this one, but I sure would come back and look at this one because I'd be thinking, where in the heck was Ansel Adams when I needed him? Is the, is the information in color important? It's the fall. And you see the detail down in here? It's beautiful. Let's go back here. It's the same. All, everything's about the illumination value of the, of the same. <clears throat> now, how many ways are there to make a picture black and white? How much money do you have? Because I can start just by, if I own Photoshop, I can just say, let's adjust for black and white. Huh. Well, thank goodness there's this. It says presets, reds. Watch what happens when I move the red slider. Why did it, why was it so variable? Because the original picture was red. Mm -hmm. And so anything I want to custom, these two, red and yellow, not much going on in green, not much in cyan, blues, nothing, agendas. So if you want to play in black and white, make sure that you do it image, adjust, black and white, and make sure you then look for the colors that are dominant. Okay? That's one way of doing it. <clears throat> the way that I did it, I love this filter right here. Remember Nick? Remember Silver Effects Pro? Mm -hmm. Wow. It's one of the best black and whites around, and I've used it for probably 15, 20 years. Okay, then I have to share that screen then. Okay. Let me get this to pause yours here. And I want to go to Silver Fix Pro. Thank you. <clears throat> We're a team, Shirley. Way to go. <laughs> All right. If I do underexposed, not bad. But look at this. And again, the reason I buy these, look at all these ways I could interpret it. If I say low key, and it's not over, you can come over to the right and you have all of these adjustments that you can make on the highlights, see it change. And I say, oh, let's go on and see what else we got down here. Here's one that's wet rocks. Well, that's appropriate, but you notice it's blown out. So I yeah. take down the highlights, I take down the brightness and eh, doesn't appeal. So the idea is if you're buying a filter, use it to get ideas here's yellow and it even includes a frame <laughs> how's that but again change the brightness look for the highlights check the midtones and shadows can be opened or shut your dynamic brightness is here overdo it looks terrible okay let's keep going down to darken Sweet. Again, I would be working in all of these. You can also change the contrast right here. This is a fast filter solution to a lot of problems. And we'll just, I'll just uh, cancel that. Okay, I'm going to go back to Photoshop. There we go. <clears throat> so Whatever I, all the parts and pieces I just showed you, this is what I ended up with and I loved it. I did do a little extra darkening on this area here. It just was still a little bright. So all I did is I took the burn tool and I went down here a couple of times. That's it. Questions? Not a question, but a comment. Again, it goes sure. back to showing that the power is in the software. And that it's fun when I, work. you should get used to trying different things. Yeah. When I started this, uh, I was a darkroom maverick. I stayed in the darkroom 24 hours at a time. I did every process known. I enjoyed it immensely. I was actually creating Photoshop composites types in the darkroom by making masks. It was very, very complicated. In fact, wow. one picture took two days to make. Today, I can do the exact same thing in approximately 15 seconds. 
So people say, well, no, the dark room is better. The dark room was a place to learn. And boy, it was wonderful. I loved it. But we are way beyond that. The amount of uh, Ansel Adams had like eight stops. We've got like 14, 15, 16 now. So mm. things have changed. And if you don't like the change, fine. But for those of us, I started uh, Photoshop at version 1.5. You know how many tools I had? <laughs> you can count them on two hands. <laughs> There's somebody else who it. must have been in that same category. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, here we have a wedding picture. I love this. I've shot a lot of weddings. My last one was in Australia. I had a great time there. Let's see if I have an edited one. Uh, do I have an edited Photoshop? So what time of the, the week or day did you do the edits all during the day okay because i did add i was just looking to see when the last photos that i added i did yeah, add like stocks, a couple stocks was the last three one. um that was the last one i had okay there's a couple more after that at three o'clock okay <laughs> yeah well, okay they're, they're mine and bruce's so what can i say <laughs> Well, no, okay, I just curious. I, we'll take the time. We'll okay. figure it out. For this one, because it was sent to me in so low resolution, I did have some problems with it. Hmm. Uh, even though it was 1900, they had resolution three. But here's what happens when you open it up and you get into it. Watch this. See? Yeah, and that's my fault, not the person who sent it. I asked him to size it to 1900 on the long side. Um, okay, I didn't I'm, I'm going to give you a new number, Shirley. Are you ready? Sure. Two, zero, four, eight. Long side? Any side, long, yes. Okay. See, our other guy who we had critiqued did 1900. and He was wrong. I think well, that I, whether he's right or wrong, I'm not going to argue with that. But well, the I, reason I know he's wrong, I did the research on this, and the the guys who really know what they're doing, they did extensive testing, and they found that two zero four eight. When you bring your picture into that resolution, put on like uh, Facebook, it's perfect. If you do any other ones, you get this kind of stuff. Hmm, okay, good to know. Two zero four eight. All right. When I looked at her face, I see this blue thing back here, and I go, ah, that's not okay. So I get the dodge tool, and I set it for highlights. I'll leave the exposure low. Now, I can't get much bigger without pixelating, which doesn't bother me, but it is, a, it is an error. And I just go over that veil. I lighten it up. Now, there's still blue in it. Here's the key. You go to sponge, you say desaturate, turn it up, and any of those blue zones, you go after them like this. So now there's no blue. Then I come back with the dodge tool. And I leave it on highlights for now, and I'll try it again. Now it's nice and light. Now, the last thing is I grab the blur tool and I come in on top of it. Watch what happens. Now I have the right color. It could even be a little lighter. And if I try that with midtones, let's see what happens. Probably will work. Yeah, that works. Okay, so now we go back. And at these, at these uh, values here, you see now it really stands out. Mm -hmm. If you're a perfectionist, which I am, you do this too, the same way, because it's blue. And that's caused by just being in shadow. But if you want to make it better, use those techniques I showed you. Now, the other thing is, because of the resolution, I, I always do this. If I have a problem like with all this stuff, I just sit with a blur tool and I go over the edges, down the face once, across, 
down the shirt, go around the edge of the coat, around the edge. Do the same with her, smooth it out. It's all good. Same with her arm, okay? I wanna make sure I understand what the 2048 would be the size on the long side that you also would share on Facebook? Yes, that's exactly what you use on Facebook. In fact, they even mentioned that. Okay. And it yeah, would also fact, work better for these critique sessions. Oh, yes, it would be perfect. Got it. And Thanks. again, if we have time, I'll show you the guy that, that has a free program. He also has a, a pro version too, but you don't really need it unless you're doing batch processing. And most of you probably aren't going to be into that. All right, let's go back to this command zero. And I need to look at the edges. I see stuff up here that really is not necessary for this image. So one of the things I did to make it easy, I just did a little bit of cropping in and that's it. It wasn't much. See now how it puts that little rock unit right there in the corner. Mm -hmm. Now down here, this thing was bugging me. You see this? What's that? So I come over and I grab, pull this over. I grab the spot healing tool, make it smaller. Watch this. All gone. You yeah. see the difference? Yeah, it's so subtle, but it's important if you're going to really make a client excited. Now, the other thing is, if you look at this picture, we have the same kind of illumination. So take the burn tool, set it really low, protect the tones, and now just have some fun with the zones. I see this is an area different from here. So I'm going to burn it down and make it a foreground. I see this is pretty light. I pull it in. Come across the top once and maybe back here. Now look at the difference. Now they're really popped. Got it? See, the camera is a copy machine. That's all it can do. You're the artist and you can make the viewers see what you want them to think is important. I like the photo, it's beautiful. Okay, let's start that one off. Don't save. What's next? Teak. And let's see, we did that one, did that one. Okay, we have this one. I don't know if I edited this one and kept it or not. I edited it, but I don't know if I kept it. So let me look. It's called what? Poison Tom 6711. Nope, I didn't do that. Okay. <clears throat> now, you I'm have ask been the listening. question on this one first. Is this St. George? Um, uh, no, no, uh, it's a. Uh, it's uh, Southern California. It's okay. Southern... Okay. I just, I know okay. there's been a few days where we've had that fog down in the, the basin and I didn't, it, it wasn't, didn't think it was, but I wasn't sure. Thanks. Yeah, I love this photo. There's so many ways of working on it. And I mean a lot. I played with this for quite a while. I don't know why I didn't keep them. One of the things that I see that probably shake you up a little bit if I get the quick selection tool and I just drag across the sky and I do hold the option key down and pick up, oh, don't want that, pick up this little bit there and now I'll take the option key and grab that mountain back. Okay, <clears throat> the reason I do that, there's things that can be done with just that sky that are important. But one of the problems is because it has so many tones and irregularities watch with this what happens now i've just made it all blue <laughs> now i've made it all black and those are the colors over here 
if I say, well, let's turn that back around and put white in there, I can fill it with white. And you say, well, what are you doing? Well, I'm gonna go edit sky replacement. Now Photoshop has all these, and I added a ton more, of course. And if you don't know how to use this area, I'd love to have a class sometime. I'll teach you how to do all this stuff, but you can add your own clouds. You can bring in clouds from external sources, like from Luminar. They have a, a ton of them. You see what's happening to the sky? So we can create a totally different effect or just enhance what we have. And I like that because it goes with the rest of the picture. You see why? These tones of gray and these, these tones here in the fog, I like that. So now I have this photo, I have to collapse it down, command J, I'm starting a new life on it. What are the options? Oh my gosh, <laughs> so many. Let's see, what do we have in here? Let's go image, show all menu. Let's adjust equalize, bam. What that did, it gave us the ultimate dark and the ultimate white in one photo. And the reason I do it is not necessarily make that the final image, but it gives me ideas. So now I change the opacity. Here we are started. Here we can brighten it in stages using the opacity here in the layers. And let's say, uh, okay, I'll hold on to that one. But what else can be done? Well, you can go in and do hue saturations. You can make it black and white. In fact, let's just see what it looks like black and white. Yeah, it's okay. Or I could save it, save a copy. And I'll put that in here under edited. And I'll make this, uh, let's see, I don't have one like it. That's good. Save it. So I'll run over here and I'll, I'll look for my, uh, program called deep art effects you go oh man by the way i teach a lot of very rich men up in cleveland uh, photoshop for the last 15 years most of them are doctors and lawyers and they always complain that i'm costing them money every time i show them a new filter i say you guys can afford it shut up so this is a photoshop filter that you purchased it's a it's not a photoshop filter at all it's totally on its own and it is incredible. So I say file, open. Again, you're gonna to have to reshare. Yep, thank you. Uh, let me go ahead and, well, actually it'll probably let me share that now, won't it? Deep Artifacts, yeah. Let's see if this Deep works. Deep Artifacts is the name of it? Deep Art Effects, it's right. Can you see the screen now? Yep. Okay, Deep Art Effects. And I need to go find my uh, program. Let's see, I put that on the desktop under critique, under editing, and it was copy. Which one was it? Posing. Right in the middle. This one? I think yeah. so. Open. Let's see if it opens up here. Okay, why didn't it open? Maybe Click I had open it. Again. Oh, I know why. I have two layers here and it doesn't like that. So I'm back in Photoshop for a moment. I'm gonna make that one and I'll save it again. Save a copy, back, edited, copy, save, replace. Okay, <clears throat> now I'll go back to Deep Artifacts. Right, where are you? There you are. I'll try it again. Can you see deep artifacts? Oh, I yeah. am seeing edited. Okay, let me check, Over make sure. I've edited. Got new share. Here's what I want you to see right there. Okay. okay. <clears throat> you got it? Yep. I'm going to go full screen. 
Here's what you get for your money. Please watch the bottom. These are ideas. This is insane. I love it. Yeah. <laughs> I knew you would, Rosie. Oh my gosh. Where do I get right. this? <laughs> oh, it's online. Now watch. I'm right now. I have a photo open. I have, I'm going to pick epic. And I I touch it. Now, if you put in a giant photo here, it takes a lot of time sometimes, maybe a minute or two. If you're using smaller uh, ones like 2048, it goes very fast. Six, five, four, three, two, one. You now have a new piece of art. Now, over on the left, oh. it says orig original colors. Okay, that's a little I funky. Yeah, well, we're not, we've only begun. <laughs> Here's the intensity. I can change the intensity. Okay. I can change the contrast. I can change the brightness, the saturation. You get the idea? We can blur it, contour it. We can grayscale if you want. Just, I don't like that one. Take the originals off again. And you say, well, okay, but what else you got? Oh, I got a few things. Let's just do I. And by the way, you don't have to undo anything. It automatically does it for you. It takes it back to the original image and then applies the new one on top of it. Look at that. Again, I can say original colors, take it off. Okay, let's go on down to Aurora. Jerry, how is this different from Remax and Topaz? Remax. Uh, Remax, Remax is a good program. I've had a lot of trouble giving it the kind of uh, artistic effect that this does. Okay. Here's one view. Here's the other original color. Now I'm going to say, okay, I'm going to save that. So I go file, save. And we're going to call it test. The other thing I like to do is say, well, what was it that I used? Aurora. <laughs> because if you forget and you like it later, you're like, oh, man, what did I do? <laughs> okay, there's saving it. All right, I'm going to share the screen back to go to Photoshop again. Here's the desktop. I mean, it's insane the number of different things if you want to go to the point of creating the artwork as opposed to i'm going to use i'm going to someone's going to yell at me for this one just a photo <laughs> the point i i like to make is the camera is a copy machine for some that's enough if you're a true artist it's not and that's where you need to make a decision what you want to do. And we have, I will say within the club, a mix, obviously, of a lot yep. of different yep. experiences, goals, yep. that kind of stuff. Yeah, my, uh, my Akron group is the same way. There's a guy who got you mad because I said, why don't you do this? And he said, I, I don't want to make any changes. I said, well, your camera already did. No, it doesn't. I said, yes, it did. I said, I'm a geek. I'm going to tell you right now, I did. <laughs> I love these debates. I get a, I have get a charge out of them. All right, so now we have this. <clears throat> if I had put it on another back, another layer, which I should have done, I would have been able to integrate that using opacity and various uh, tools here. But you mean the original only... photo? Correct, and I should have done that. Oh, oh that would be cool. <laughs> yeah. But you get the idea? We can do another one later. I just wanted you to know how many ways there are to do the same thing. Now, the problem is I also am running Windows on my computer. <laughs> and the reason is there's one program on it that will not run on a Mac because it's 32-bit 
or it's 64 bit and it will not run on a Mac without Windows. So I bought Windows, I put the program in. And if I, if you want me to come back and do another program, wait till you see what it can do. It makes all of these others look simple. It is incredible art program, but it's too much to get into windows and do all that right now. Yeah, no, we um, don't have time for that. No. All right. Where are we here? Um, yes. I love this one. Yeah. I was going to say we've got surfaces to do yet. Now, if I go to edit, did I keep that one here? I think I got one there. Okay. This is a quick change. Holy cow. And the reason I did that, what did I tell you about luminosity values? Come on. I don't know. <laughs> what happens if the entire picture is of about the same luminosity? You don't know what to look at. You do now. Let's do it again. Oh, Get the yeah. idea? Dramatic yes. difference, yes. Big, big difference. So <clears throat> if, it, if, if you don't take anything else away other than say that, Jivin, what's he up to? Say this. Are my luminosity values all the same across my print? If they are, what can I do about it? You can do a lot. But in some cases though, see, to me, the first one, and I, I don't think Shirley, the other Shirley is on. Um, to me, in this case, it's the glow of the branches. That's the subject. But when you do the other, picture to me it's the rocks that are the subject uh-huh i don't yeah, know if that fact, was you know it depends on what her her vision was in creating the photo that she did right and i because i have a degree my first degree is earth science geology you know i'm go for the rocks, the rocks. <laughs> right. now watch i'm going in from hue saturation i'm going to change that to reds I'm going to say, now we have a totally different effect. But it gives you the tools, as you say, the photographer slash artist, for you to decide what the topic or the subject is. And you can make Got it. different subjects out of the same photo. Yes. And isn't that fun? <laughs> it can be, yeah. Yeah. So that picture would be also good. Let's see if I did another one. Yes, I did. You want to see how far you can take this? <laughs> yes. Wow. Wow. So my main point in present presentation tonight is to get you to start thinking out of the box. How many ways can we change this? Or do we want to? So let's take the, uh, let's go back and get a uh, surface here. Let's take this one again. <clears throat> so the first thing, if I adjust Scotia, I have to show all menu items. I'm going to adjust equalize, watch what happens. Bam, not a lot, but when I come back with curves, or levels, and I say, push, pull, push, pull. And you start playing with this, you get some really crazy things happening. But one of the things I wanted to do was grab everything that was red. So I said, what color range am I interested in? Well, I'm only red, okay. So I turn this up to get most of the reds. And then I said, well, what can I do with that? Well, I have another filter <laughs> called Flaming Pear that's been out for 20 some years. And one of them is called Glitterado. And when I use it, it allows me to hit this. Key. There's a, are you still seeing my screen? Yep, Probably we're not. doing good. You still see it? Yeah. You see Glitterado? Okay, good. 
by hitting that dice, I can keep changing randomly what's going on. By trial and error, I found out if I turn that brightness up, this one back, scale fine, color down, watch what happens. I have stars. And that's how I created that other image. Oh my goodness. Isn't that beautiful? That is amazing. So it's just another way of seeing. And there's how I did it. Yeah. What's this one? Oh, my favorite. Whose is this? That's Shirley Surfaces also, and I don't think she called in. Oh, but that's a good thing we're recording it, so. Yes. <clears throat> well, let's see. Where is that one? Did I? In the, oh, where did I put that? It's called... S surface two, S surface. Oh, I guess I don't have it here anymore. Oh, that's okay. But you know, I, I'm gonna speak for myself on this and maybe I'm speaking for other members. I'll Sometimes do. you get, a, you have a photo and it does speak to you and you do it a certain way. And you don't know or you can't even imagine what some of the other stuff is that you can do with it that's why you have people like me show you all this yeah i guess so <laughs> but yeah that's all right i love this picture um again the geology in me but the first thing i thought it's in the wrong direction for me so as a critic i thought well what can you do about that well you can rotate it so let's do it clockwise. And the reason I picked that, the dark area is at the bottom of the screen now. And that's a good start for a base. Second, I started looking at all the things going around. I thought, could it be better if you did this? And then I looked at it and I thought, well, that's okay, but it needs a little work on this side too, whoops. Let's put it to there, because I like that dark area. Do we need all of this at the bottom? Not really. Bring it up, maybe down a little bit. All right, now I'm starting to get the feel for it. So here's what I did. Remember I told you about luminosity? Mm -hmm. Color range always the same. I'm gonna take the sponge tool and I'm gonna desaturate it at 100%, and here's what I'm gonna desaturate, all the innards. And I won't make it perfect because I don't wanna take that much time. Because I'm a perfectionist, I do spend a lot of time at the computer. <laughs> a little bit there, a little here, a little there. This will give you the idea. Command minus. You see what a difference that is? I'll place yeah. that. Let's do a lot of here. I want that out. There's a little guy there. Get him there. Now, I have all kinds of things I can do with this picture to change it into something more um, RT if I if I want to. I start looking down through here. Oh, I've got, I can neon it, oil paint it, sketch it. I've got snap art. I got filter forge. Don't even get me started with this. So those are all I'm, different filters you've purchased. So yes. like if I go out to my Photoshop, I'm not going to see all of those because I haven't Correct. made the collection. <laughs> Just want to Correct. clarify that for everybody. So I'm like, no, where is that? I, now, I will I will show you Jixie Picks because I love it. It's uh, it, it can do some really great painterly effects. Bam. Down here, I can pick 
Look at that. What was the name of that program again? It's called Jixi Picks, and this is Impresso Pro. But isn't this fun? Wow. Now, Jerry, these programs that you're telling us about, are these for desktop? Um, uh, they all go in as Photoshop filters. Okay, great. Which is cool. Wow. Now, I'm going to make a painting, and then I'm going to do another thing with it just to show you what's available. Let me get rid of this. Let's pick uh, one with the reddish. There we go. I'll say, okay, apply it to photo. Because I'm thinking of a big canvas that I want to put in my room. But the thing is, it looks a little too, too tight. Well, I've got other things I need to do to it. These white zones did not get carried around. So I will say, as an artist, I would like to take those whites through highlights, exposure high, watch what happens. I can bring them around. Mm. How did it know to go to those white rings? It's trying to pick a, a light area and work on it first. And because these had a little bit of lightness to them, that's why it picked them. Isn't that neat? Wow. That is really cool. I'm doing this fast, of course. Now, let's go back. You say, yeah, that looks good. And it'll be good in my hallway, but it is still a little too photographic. Not a problem. Make a new layer. Go back to Jixi Picks, chromatic edges. It's the second filter they sell, but watch what it does. If I say, oh, let's do a number 10 or a nine. Nine's good. Apply it. And where did it go? Why didn't it pick it? Hello, where are you? That's odd. Let's take Is it in your other layer? No, layer copy. No, it didn't no. show up. Let's try it again. I'll uh, collapse these and make a new one again. Filter chromatic edges. There. Now, here's a little trick. If you say canvas size, I don't want it in pixels, I want it in inches, and I want it relative. Usually that's off, turn it on. And I'm gonna say three inches width, let's get the number here, three inches height. I'm leaving this alone because I wanted to create a, a vacuum around it. And then I can go in Let's do this. And I can fill in with other colors. I can leave it transparent and put it on top of another photo if I want. You can mm -hmm. go crazy. But let's go back and make a frame. Filter, Studio 2, Topaz. You really, really need this program. <laughs> it's a great program. If you're interested in this kind of stuff that I'm doing. If you go to my web, to my Facebook, you'll see how many different styles you can work. All right, add filter in the top right corner. You tap it, you come down, you say, let me get rid of my picture. I want a digital frame. So I click on digital frame and I want a color black. I can change the frame size and width and all that. I'll just do a real quick one and say, fine. And now we have a frame piece of art. Hmm. And you say, well, that's not exactly white. It's kind of, yeah, I kind of like that. But if you don't, not a problem. Adjust. And you go down to curves. Now watch. You grab the white medicine dropper. You punch that. Now it's all white. So we really all need to get like a bazillion years of experience with Photoshop and these different things to be able to do some of this. <laughs> At least that's the way I'm feeling right now this second. I'm feeling a little overwhelmed. Well, I, have a, but... I have a doctor, Dr. Levine. He takes Photoshop classes from me in Zoom online. 
and he's been doing it for months. He loves this because it gives him new ideas. As a surgeon, you know, you get wrapped up. Yeah. And he, he sees what I do with his pictures and he goes nuts. Well, <laughs> just go crazy. I would say that if you are interested in um, telling or informing Color Country about your classes, feel free to do so. Well, thank you. I don't usually promote myself, but yeah. when I hear people like you guys saying, gosh, I want to know how to do that. Uh, yeah. Okay. I can. Cause I'll you. talk to you, Jerry, about potentially doing some other um, focused type groups. Yes. Now, I would love that. I think that you probably have, since you said Craig's was the last one that you had. Yes. So then I need to ask, because you must have downloaded them from the, the Dropbox. Yes. So then otherwise you you don't have Bruce's and mine. I'm okay no. mine not being discussed. Bruce, how about you? No, we can do it. I, I can probably download them here. Okay. Um, Craig's was fun because he's, he's such a uh, fanatic. And I say that knowing I know him that everything he does is like right on. The one thing I noticed about this picture that I thought could use some improvement is so white that it almost overpowered the picture for me looking down into the, uh, the universe here. So what I did is I, there's several ways you can do it. One of the ways is you can say filter, give me a color range, pick the white. You see what just happened? I now have that whole range. It picked up a few things here, not, not a problem. Once you've done that, you go right back and you say, modify that by feathering it. And I'm gonna feather one pixel. So now I have all the whites under my belt and I can go in and do things with it. For instance, I can go to curves or whatever. So let's try curves, but watch this. I'm gonna start with the top and pull it down. What? I'm gonna do it a lot. You see what's happening? Hmm. If I do it a little bit, and then I say, okay, what I usually do next is I add noise to it. You say, are you crazy? We spent all this time getting rid of noise. Let's get close. I want it monochromatic. I don't want very much. So I'll hit the number two instead of 14. Let's see if I can get the number three here. That'll work. Do you see what's happening in that before and after? Mm -hmm. Those little dots give it texture, but they're still not under control. So I go to blur and I go to Gaussian blur. And if I take it way down and I go, let's click on here so you can get close. Now I can blur that, see what I just did? And the reason for all of that work, I had a huge printer. And if you have something that's bright white, the only thing you get there is the color of the paper. I'm in charge. So I make sure that bright whites still have something to give back to the printer. And that's mm -hmm. what all of that was about. The other thing I, I thought I could do with this picture is it's a little light in the foreground your eyes kind of drifting off in those weeds and so on. So if you go mid-tones or what if you go shadows with really low exposure, watch what happens. That's it, just a little cool. bit. Very cool. If you go one time across here, you can change the feeling of that, that background. And I would do that with mid-tones like this. You see what you're doing? You're creating a push up or down now, or you can just do this and that. So the point is there's a lot of ways, but I would definitely work on the amount of light that's being pumped through here. Because I like it, but it as a printing problem, it's gonna show up, okay? Now let's see if I can find something under here. Okay, photos, critique, drop box, open up. Come on. I'm a little drop box. 
Let's go to, here it comes. Okay, what name am I looking for? Yes, Critique and Shirley Critiques. Should be BS Critique, up, up one more, down. Oh, here. Right there, that's there one of them. One. And then down the lower is the two that are Shirley Critique. Okay, this one wants to download immediately. It doesn't want to wait on me. Download. Yeah. And the other one was, let's go back. Two of them that have Shirley Critique. Shirley Critique. Yep. And download that one. I don't want to do that again. Download. Okay. And then there's one more Shirley Critique. There's two of them. Yeah, those are the last ones. I don't, know took, and I... I don't know if it took off on its own or not. <laughs> I'll we'll find try out. it again. All right, back to Photoshop. And those are the I'll last of the ones. Open. And I want to go to Downloads. And I want to go to Critique 5. And did it go into here? Or is it still in downloads? Oh, it's right there. Let's do that one. All right. Okay. Just interesting. If I look at the vibrance in this, kind of, I think the green is a, a bit much. This, this is an infrared. Ah, thank you, because I use infrared a lot. Um, in that case, I well, because these foregrounds are so bright, mm -hmm. I think they need to come down. So as a photographer who's worked in infrared, you need to do that. Okay. And that. And you see the zone along the top is really bright. And what would Ansel say about that? Oh, he'd say, tone her down. Okay, there we go. Good. And down here in the corner, I think we need a little cropping. Here's the reason. This thing, there's a there's a blank space right in here. I don't think it's helping the picture at all. Keep it square though. Yeah, if you want to do that, then you punch it. I like the square aspect ratio. Yeah, I don't blame it. Okay. All right. Now, well, we still didn't get that off the corner, did we? There we go. Yeah, the the green is is odd because it reminds me of being on another planet, and that does not bother me at all. <laughs> but for other people, this needs to be brought in a little more. And oh, now I see it. Here we go. That's what's needed. Thank you. See what happened? Now we have definition of these pieces here by just darkening those in slightly. That needs to go down. Let's bring this down. I kind of like that. Could give it a little more definition there. That's good. Good. All right. Now, just if we go into another. Uh, time zone here let's try let's try silver effects on this one a lot of my infrareds i have an infrared camera and it shoots in near color so i get all these wild colors and then i go back into um, into lightroom and i make it a black and white and work on it from there yeah i don't like this one in a black and white i tried very hard i like the color the 720 yeah. color the black Let's and white see. did nothing for me. Yeah, so far I don't see anything good here. Yet. Nope. I went through all the Silver FX Pros. I even did, did some you? other stuff in Photoshop and there was just nothing that made it happy for me. Yeah, I agree. I don't see anything either. Let's try high contrast. No, it just becomes a mishmash. It, it becomes mud in my mind. 
Yes, I agree. Well, yeah. the big thing for you to work on is these zones need to be tightened up just mm -hmm. with the burn tool. Yep. See how it yep. brings everything on the other side forward. Now, the other thing is you could do, do you see how we have some green at the bottom? I don't think that's helping the picture because what is happening is drawing my eye down into, into this rubble and I don't want that. So what I would do is set desaturate for 100 and I would just draw across the greens. Mm -hmm. Just make that black and white. That, I can, now, that I'd be okay with. Yeah, now your eye doesn't get messed up down here. Cool. Okay. I think that's fine the way it is now. The only other thing I just saw is possibly bringing that down to there, right? Well, there. that I don't mind. What I don't care for on the left, I feel like the curve is now missing. Over here? Yep. Yeah, see, I wouldn't keep it square. That was your idea. Well, no, I, I keep it square, but what I was going for was that curve. There was this gentle sloping yeah. curve. And now we you can lose keep it that, like that with the cropping. Yeah that, yeah. that works. Yeah. But see if if you do it, let's see. Eh, I don't know how we can do both at the same time. Don't worry so. about it. Um I was going for a set of 12 by 12s. Working yeah. on a set of 12. That's square. Don't worry now. about it. Yeah. Yeah, that's square. I, I just think if you enhance these zones with that yep. burn tool, that really does it. See how you give that corner a nice dark feature mm -hmm. there. That yeah, works. Get rid of it. Okay. Okay. Don't save. And another short peak here. Okay. Okay, tell me about luminosity values. It's all the same? They have the same value across the image. Yeah, pretty the much, image. yeah. Now, when that happens, now you have to make a choice. Um, one of the things you could do is get rid of all foliage up here and put in a totally different sky effect. Or you could even use, um, in fact, let's, let's do this. It may not be the best thing, but it'll be showing you something new. If I say I need a, I need, where is it? Where's my guys at? Where is it? File, library. Let's just pick a, some sort of a filter here. I'll do one that's pretty heavy. Oh, that work. That'll work. All right, I have two things. If I have a script called DOP Texture Blending, this guy is now out of business, but you can still find this. And if you ask, I can even send it to you because he, he doesn't even sell it much anymore. But watch what happens. It did all of this. Watch when mm. you see this. It did all of this. So what I do is I go to global levels and I punch it twice and I bring that white point up till it just touches. Then I go to the levels master and I do the same thing or down. And the last one levels master. Now I can change this. I can go here, but you get the idea. Yeah, I hadn't thought about adding a lay a, um, a texture to it. Yeah, now that's one way of doing it. <clears throat> you say, well, I don't have all those tools, so let's revert this. So now, if I have a texture and I say I want it all, and I want to copy it, Command C. Now I go back to the original. I say, all right, I'm, I'm going to have to do something here. So I go show all people, all the things here. I'll paste it on top. Command T gives you the ability to change the size of that filter. See what's happening? Mm -hmm. Command T. 
Now, you have two things to deal with. One is you can just start playing with these. Mm -hmm. Here's a light and see how it gives you a totally different look. The other way, if I go soft light and I grab a mask and I grab a paintbrush and black, I can lighten that up or change it back to its normal state. If I don't want all of that effect up there. So normal opacity, I'll go 100%. You'll really see the difference. Mm -hmm. Boom. And if you then keep that idea, but you want to change the opacity low, you can kind of work your way through the picture, changing where you want that emphasis. Okay. Okay. Now, let's see what else is available. Well, let's take that. We're we're starting to lose some of our audience, so perhaps okay. we should go to the last. We're probably getting a little long. Okay. Thanks, though. Okay. And that would be Bruce's last. BSP, one that one right there. Okay. All right. What do we see here? Remember I talked about luminance? luminance? Notice how this is so overpowering. So everything going on down here is really non -con is, is not important at all. And if that was his idea, but for me, I think we should give this a little bit of attention. So to do that, I would start with a dodge tool and leave it on highlights. And I would just run this across this ridge right there. See how that came forward? And I'm doing that just real quick with highlights. <clears throat> All of this information, let's see what would happen if we tried to grab it. And I don't want to do it in the square. Don't want to do that. Let's do it with uh, quick. Okay, good. Now I come back and I can adjust the saturation because I think it's a little overpowering. See how that gives a little more of a calendar effect. I'll leave that as is. Come in there. All right, now we're gonna do something wild. We're gonna select it all. We're gonna go back into transform we're going to do a perspective. So I'm going to grab this and pull. When you do that, sometimes it shortens things up. So you have to come right back and you pick up scale. And now you pull and you can bring it back to this relationship that you start with. So those are the two steps when you do perspective. Pull it out, makes these a little straighter, but you have to then change the scale. Now, Looking at the photo in detail, this area here is sticking out. This should be the main emphasis getting us into the background. So I'm gonna darken that down. And you can do that many ways. One is just to select a, whoop, let's not do a D. Yeah. And you can come right in and adjust the curves on that. Pull it down, pull it down. Something like that. Now let's look at it. See, now your eye doesn't go there. This is a real important section here, but we still have a very bright foreground. I would take that down quite a bit like that. Bring that down. Okay, it's getting there now. Okay, it's good. If you want to balance those light areas in these giant rocks, I would use highlight, low, watch. There it is. Now there's a little more balance. You say, well, maybe it should have been darker. Well, yeah, should have. There. Okay. I 
you see a jumble down in here. Because of that, I wonder what would happen if I could get rid of that. That was a quick and dirty. You see the difference? Mm -hmm. Now our eye stays here. And you say, yeah, but that's not what I saw in the camera. I know. <laughs> I know. It wasn't. I also have uh, brushes. I can make this look like it's smoking. Look like a volcano. <laughs> make it a volcano. <laughs> Cute. Right. Okay, Cute. I think we're done. I think we're done. Yeah. yeah. Thank we covered you. A lot. We covered a lot. Yes. Well, that was yeah. fantastic. Thank you so much. Will well, there be links to show how to get some of those? Um... Oh, yes. Let me show yeah, you. Yeah, just that. send me those and then I can. Um... You can send them on for me. Yeah, I think that Good. would be the best way to go. I'm going to stop I, the I recording. Agree. Yeah. Okay, well, let's do that.